My name is Alex Wilcox and I'm the owner of Lord Willie's, a gentleman's haberdashery in New York City. Today I'm going to show you how to tie a Windsor knot for the manual. So, the Windsor knot is going to need a little bit more silk than usual and so the shorter end of your tie, the skinny end, is going to need to be sitting a little higher. And don't worry if the, if the, if the fatter end is really looking quite long at this point. You can always correct that for your own body type at some point. The first step you're going to do is simply cross the larger side over the smaller and bring that back to yourself. Then by simply threading it over the top, we are creating the small triangle that is the base of the Windsor knot. To do a single Windsor, you would cross this over and create the tie as such, but we're going to do a double. So rather than crossing it back to ourselves, we're going to go back over again so what this achieves is a much larger triangular area. So that as we cross over this time, we're now getting a bigger foundation. So you can see the beginning of the tie beginning to form. So as we pull this through again, you can see really this, that the tie has been put into shape. So all we have to do now is simply thread the larger end through and gently pull the silk, don't strangle it, gently pull and pinch and then we pull the shorter end up to the top so you can see the tie sits beautifully. Uh, this is shown against a spread collar and the Windsor knot should always be worn with a spread collar or a cutaway collar. That's due to the symmetry, it's the triangle with the triangle so that you end up with a lovely clean presentable tie like that. 